and welcome back to all my Biconics out there. And welcome to another SmackDown Squad review of this week's episode of WWE SmackDown. I am joined by the professor this week. Minnie is on assignment somewhere in the ether playing Magic the Gathering. Hope he wins, by the way. Is that what he's doing? Did he cross the border to go play Magic again? That's what no. He crossed the ethereal plane, and who knows? Oh, maybe he'll maybe. maybe he'll get in and out again and cause an in and out parking lot. <laughs> If you get those jokes, thanks for listening this long. Yes, it is great. Uh, we were talking before we started. Mikey, works. I'm excited because we finally didn't have a 2 out of 10. Like, we finally had something interesting to talk about. It's been a while. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Like, and we'll talk about it as we go in. But I was surprised. I was like, as a go-home show for, Sma for SummerSlam, which is happening today, by the way. Oh, uh, it this is the day of SummerSlam. Which, by the way, me and the professor will talk about our picks towards the end of this review. We'll talk about it. But as a go-home show SmackDown for SummerSlam, it was meh. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't, like, great either. Um, right. We finally did get something we wanted in one of the women's storylines. We'll talk about it in a little bit. But as a Shoot. SmackDown episode, I was happy to see, like, the potential feuds and storylines going beyond SummerSlam, which is important because we, after SummerSlam, we only have four weeks until payback. Yeah, so I we were talking before we started, like, we had, what, four weeks in a row of, like, twos and threes and fours, and then we had, like, a random eight or seven in there where we're like, oh, I'm happy, cool, this is pretty good, but that's kind of been the pattern for the last few months, with sort of like, oh, meh, uh, and maybe they just needed the impetus of a go-home show, maybe they kind of just had to get their P's and Q's in order quickly, it's not perfect. There are some clunky sort of what does that even mean things that were going on in here, but we'll talk about uh, where that goes. Um, the show starts off with LA Knight's theme music, which it just should. Uh, Ohio loves LA Knight, which is great. Uh, I texted you this, I think, right when, it, when I saw it. <laughs> LA Knight walks out and mouths, let's kick this bitch off right to the crowd, which was like, oh, this dude gives none Fs. Uh, and then comes down to the ring and just runs his mouth about this battle royale, which I kind of feel like he was saying what we're thinking, which is this little bit of like, you made this decision 10 days ago because you didn't know what else to do and you wanted us all to be there. Uh, it also makes me think he knows the result and he might not be too happy about it. So he got the mic and decided to call some stooges stooges. Right. Yeah. Well, I had... The first question happened because he was running down the people in the card and then he like basically his his jab at Seamus made me cackle a little bit. <laughs> so for those of you that didn't hear it and I caught it and I'm surprised I let it through straight up calls Seamus a pasty gooch, which if you're from the early 2000s and the 90s, that's the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> God, it's so I was laughing so hard. Uh, uh -uh. Just so good but my first question that came up is when we saw the people involved i was like wait a minute this is not everybody where is everybody else <laughs> i know and la knight makes that joke we're so obviously this isn't everybody it's like okay that's fair these are the uh, important not, people that matter i guess i'm trying to i'm trying to think of off the top of my head it's mostly yeah. smackdown stars except for shinsuke i was like he's the only raw superstar on there by the way where's Tommaso Ciampa we just said on Monday Night Raw he was gonna be in this thing and you didn't have that what the hell you guys so I'm kind of curious to see where this goes uh I again it's the dreaded curse of the going home show if you win on the going home show you're probably losing the next night I hope that's not true I hope they built this up to think that and then something different happens I don't know I I I Every time we guess and make these predictions, we're always hopeful in one direction. Then it's like, well, eh, meh. Um, except for Backlash. Backlash, we were all really happy about. Uh, so I, I liked this match. I had no problem with the match. There's the one, I don't want to say botch. It wasn't a botch. The there were mistake. two botches. <laughs> there were two. There were two. There was one that was obviously a mistake, and they went big, and they went for it, and it was just kind of a slip miss hiccup that happens. Uh... That was didn't really distract me. I was more distracted by why are all these guys in the match coming out in the rumble? I was like, is this a lumberjack ring? match all of a sudden? Like what happened? Yeah, not a ski team match, a lumberjack match. And why is this happening? Uh, you're you're overreacting to him calling you stooges. 
Right? It, that doesn't seem quite right to me. He runs his mouth all the time, and now you're going to be a big gang and show up and walk down the Why? It just felt kind of muted and not needed. No, I would have understand if L.A. Knight was talking like smack about everybody the last couple weeks and everyone just got tired of his mouth. Then I would be like, yeah. okay. But see, the problem is, is WWE will do that. And then everyone cheers when everybody else beats up on the smack talker. But right. we're in the reverse row. This is a smack talker the audience, both live and the television audience, yeah. loves. And we want him to talk smack because L.A. Knight, yeah. I feel like, has become a vehicle for us wrestling fans to just voice whatever we're thinking about the crap that is happening yeah. right now. LA Knight has done a beautiful thing in taking that attitude era, I'm the bad guy, but you love me thing. And you don't know what to do with that, which, you know, a tradition started by Brian Pillman and then which is carried on through if you're writing a thesis on wrestling and storylines and anti-heroes and characters and whatnot, how that works. Cause it's sort of, we should hate LA Knight. But there's an edge to him that he's just saying what we're thinking and he don't give a damn. And that was the best of Stone Cold, the best of The Rock, the best of DX in the 90s. So I can see why he gets a little bit of the hate. But I also don't because it's still his spin and his take on it. It's not. That's a that's for a different thing. Um, the fact that they, the crowd was booing Seamus, who's been a hero for years crowd was boo and Seamus didn't know what to do he did the he did the Hulkster thing like oh did you hear me at one point a few times to to kind of get the crowd up a little bit but right I, I wonder if Seamus was even shocked like oh yeah I'm not I am not the face here <laughs> and I think that's gonna be the fact for anybody right now that goes up against LA Knight because LA Knight is so over with the fans but you know, hopefully after SummerSlam, we see him getting pushed and like a legit feud instead of him coming. I know he draws numbers, but I'm like, WWE, you need to capitalize it and give him some momentum. Like, yeah. I'm going I'm to be honest. I think I hope Santos wins next week and then Santos versus LA Knight will be a fun little feud for that title. Sure. Like, I'm OK with it, but but we'll see. Um, they never do the right. They never do the right thing. They're gonna do something weird at SummerSlam, and we're all gonna go, "Uh, what?" And then he's gonna do another Gatorade match. Like it, they're just gonna find a way to make it weird. I guess we'll find out in a couple of hours when we watch SummerSlam <laughs> to see. Jeez. By the way, when this video comes out later, uh, to it will come out today on Saturday. So this will come out right before SummerSlam starts. So who knows? We might be completely wrong of when everything we, happens. We will have to, yeah. So between now and then we got SummerSlam to watch tonight and, and tomorrow, then we're reviewing it by Monday. Uh, it's, it's gonna be a weird plot it's line. It's gonna be interesting. But LA Knight mm -hmm. picks up the victory here. Karrion Cross and Grayson Waller of all people have like chased LA Knight out of the ring, but also the brawling brutes and the faction that AJ Styles in uh, the OC like start brawling for no reason. It's weird, and I'm which is strange. Like, All right, I have a theory on this. I was gonna throw by you, uh, and this makes sense to me. I wonder if Grayson Waller and Karrion Cross were kind of jockeying for a position to get on camera so that they could be the last thing LA Knight saw. So it was calculated on their part to kind of be like, hey, everyone's out in the ring. Hey, everyone takes a shot at L.A. Knight. Well, the two of them played it off just enough to where they were the last things we saw. So you know so what that I, means, right? We're going to get more carrying cross for about six months. Well, we'll talk about that because during the bumpers, they amount, they announced something. I'm like, really? We're still going? All right. But I think L.A. Knight and those two are going to be the final three but I'll make my predictions about who's going to win oh, that later. I think we just got telegraphed like the final, like, like in a horror movie. These are your final girls. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if they did telegraph that. If they did, that was a subtle nod that even I didn't catch. Uh, that's interesting. I think that might, that might, that could be something. Or it's Seamus and we go, uh, okay. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> see, I, 
I already made enemies when I posted my predictions earlier this morning because I I did not pick LA Knight to win this world battle oh, royal. Did you? Oh, I gotta go look at your picks. But, I didn't know you did your picks. Already. Well, t well, I didn't put it in the document, but I posted a video oh. on my TikTok about it. But we'll uh, we'll go through it once we do picks at the oh, end. Are the are the kids yelling at you on the TikTok? Oh no. Well, I knew that it was going to happen, but I'm just like WWE doesn't make logical decisions. But LA Knight wins here. Uh, so, I, me and Minnie talked about this next thing on Raw. We got a replay of the Brock and Cody video package where they literally went through the top 10 songs trending on TikTok and put it in for this thing. I do <laughs> I do love the song Daylight by David and Kushner, but I will say what I said on Monday Night Raw. This felt like this was like the final project, like in a high school media productions class put it together. And when they were looking for music to put in for the video package, they decided to, this is like a high school senior. So they decided to pick a song that was trendy and throw it in the video. Yes. I love, while I love the song, like the contents and the lyrics and the breakdown, if it does not match this weird ass view that we're getting, I like oh, the really? video package yeah. itself, but I'm just like, I didn't need to see it again. We just saw it on Monday night raw. And that's, and that's what we're running into are these, we're going to play a demographic thing. But WWE has this, you know, then, now, forever, together thing. So they're trying to play, what, 40 years of demographics at once? That's really hard and almost impossible. You're going to alienate and make it weird at some point. So it doesn't always gel, which we'll talk about a few of those promos tonight. From last night, we're like, what, what are you, what does this do? Right. So that I don't have a lot to say on this because I said all my thoughts during the raw review. Uh, so next match, this was just made on the fly. This was the brawling brutes taking on the OC, which I thought was a fun match. And then you know, as we're getting towards the finishing sequence, the best thing that could have happened did, and the street profits. It was so weird. They finally turned. I guess heel is the best way to put it. But man, the audience was cheering for them as they were beating they down the other team. Loved it. I love, I'm going to miss, if this is where the Street Profits are going, and we got this Bobby Lashley faction coming, I love how the match was so good, we jumped right to how it ended. But the, <laughs> the match itself was fine. Because this, is the, this is the was, important bit, because this goes, good. yeah, this goes into building what's happening after SummerSlam. Right. Um, the Street Profits come out looking gorgeous in, in very nice clothes. Uh, they had a little bit of a hard time moving in the loafers. I saw a few slips and bumps and sort of, yeah, it's hard to wrestle in those. Be careful. Um, <laughs> wrestlers will tell you that. So uh, if this is the end of Street Profits, Red Cups, living in the streets, it makes me sad. However, it makes me happy that they're evolving and we got somewhere to go. And they can be pushed from different angles in different directions. Again, we're going back to this attitude thing of attitude era of, oh, you're the heel, but we like you. Well, we even and saw it like as after the beatdown happened, the prophets go back up and then Bobby joins them and the whole crowd's just like, Bobby, Bobby, yeah. which made me happy. I was like, yes, give Bobbles Lashley his flowers. He deserves it. Absolutely. And, and it's going to get interesting if they're trying to push heels and they're not quite, they're not going to sell his heels. We're back in that sort of cool gray anti-hero era again, or we're alluding to it, which I'm fine with, which I'm excited about, but you better write the hell out of it. You better lean on that stuff, and you can't just let it uh, tread water, because that was sort of the, down, the downside of the Attitude Era, was after a while, it was like, great, we've done everything, what do we do? And it was really hard to gear shift out of that, and then you had 10 years of clunky madness. Um... I'm I'm intrigued. I think they might be a presence at SummerSlam. I think they might have some sort of something to do with some of these matches. I don't know what, uh, but I'm here for it. I am too. I'm really excited, and this gives me hope. For I'm just happy to see Bobby back on my television screen because the last we saw of him was when he won that Battle Royale, the SmackDown Go Home before WrestleMania. So it's I guess been, so, yeah. It's we been a little bit. Then, we haven't yeah. seen him since. And he came out awkwardly holding the trophy. And in his head, he's just like, damn. I was like, I won this trophy, but y'all couldn't have given me a match at SummerSlam. I mean, at right. WrestleMania, I was just like. Has he been, was he hurt? Or he just kind of got 
left there. He just kind of got left there, just like LA Knight and a couple other people who didn't make the WrestleMania Weird. card. Again, you have such a big roster, but you are featuring the same six or seven people every week. I'm like, just, just, t just rotate people in every other week. Like, it's not that hard. Okay, so... Uh, people have a lot of opinions of the Charlotte Flair promo that happened. A lot of people are like, ill. I thought this was the best promo she has given because she's leaning into that legacy. And it's like, I know I'm fabulous and I'm rich. And I'm like, be this character. I'm here for that. Sure. Pick one. Charlotte Flair does not benefit from being the anti-hero and being in the middle. She's got to be all one or all the other. That's just sort of the archetype. And where Let she her just be cocky. He'll be like, I know I'm fabulous. I'm a Flair. Duh. That works. <laughs> Uh, the only thing that took me out of that promo was the fact that she was on a boat that was docked. <laughs> Just sort of, look at me living this lavish lifestyle on what's obviously somebody else's boat, and we're not allowed to take it out of the dock. <laughs> I will say yeah. the drone shots of her on t on the like front of the boat as it's like slowly like panning outwards and higher and higher. I was just like, sure. good job, drone work. That was great. They should have cut it a second sooner so we didn't see it on the dock. <laughs> That would have been great. Take it out on Lake Michigan and get the wind and sun going and do it perfect. Not this isn't a dock in Detroit. My like, OK, come on. I will say I was laughing because she Charlotte had this lavish promo. And then we'll talk about Oscar and Bianca's later. I was just like, did we not have the budget to give these women something else? It looked like Oscar shot hers that day. And then Bianca Belair's was shot like maybe in her house on her phone. <laughs> like there was no. Yeah, we'll we'll dissect those a little bit better. Yeah. But I actually liked the Charlotte Flair promo, and I thought it served its purpose. It was weird not seeing any of these three women physically on the show, but it is what it is. I think it ser it served the purpose we needed. Absolutely. I didn't hate it as a promo. I was happy to see her pick a direction. I didn't hate it for that. I, I was kind of meh about it because I'm over Charlotte Flair, like we've all talked about. Like, Charlotte Flair, you're awesome. There's all these other women. Give them a shot. This has been a muddy storyline for months. Let's tie it up in a bow, and then I'll make my picks how I think it's going to happen, how it should happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk about picks. It's going to be great. Okay, so let's talk about this next segment that kind of ended the mm -hmm. first hour. So uh, Ski Team member Paul Heyman comes <laughs> down to the ring. You know, a lot of people have been calling him a walrus. I'm not going to do that because I like Paul Heyman. And I feel like that's a little mean, though. I could kind of see the comparison. But homeboy well, comes out. No, yeah, you're not wrong. There, people hate Paul Heyman, the character. People love Paul Heyman, the producer, the entrepreneur, and what he's done for this business. So there's a duality that that's very complicated they, they gotta write books about paul Heyman someday it's right. right anyway you were saying you were saying yeah so if i was gonna call him anything i'll be like at this stage of the game of w how he currently looks i'm like he's paul bear he uh, he's paul bear's like long lost twin brother somewhere <laughs> oh sure absolutely the and the inflections sometimes give me paul bear i was like man My <laughs> exactly paul Heyman. yeah i love it so much but paul Heyman comes to the ring and of course, as usual, the crowd is booing him to high heaven, which is warranted given that he's a heel manager. He talks about a little promo and then we talk about, I really like this video package of the explanation of tribal combat. And we got people that we wanted to see on television for a while. I hope they're in ring there tonight, but we'll see. But we got Rikishi, we got the wild Samoans, like Seeing this the wild was beautiful. Samoans was I haven't seen clips of them in forever, which is a travesty because I would have been itty bitty tiny watching wrestling when they were kind of coming to the end of their careers in the in the late 80s. Uh, incredible promo. I thought it was really exciting. Um, what's sad, and I shouldn't have done this, I went through the family tree. So many of that f members of that family have passed away or are permanently injured or not around. And I have... One, two, three, three dear friends who are very Samoan, and they will tell you they live hard lives. They not all they don't always take care of themselves, and either you live to a hundred or you barely make forty. And and that's tough seeing that reflected in family trees. And of course, that's a lot of things and genetics and life and disposition or whatever. But that was a little heartbreaking. I went through the family tree and I was like, oh, right, oh my gosh, this is. But if anything, that gives them you know more of that 
uh, passion for family and tradition and how much it means because, you know, those things tend to make families stronger. But I digress. This was awesome. This was. Yeah, this, this was a blast. It gave me ideas. I loved it. As a, as a theater person and director, like, oh, yeah, here's how you build this plot, that plot, this conflict sort of thing. Now, here's the thing, and we're past a certain point, so I can say this on YouTube. Don't fuck it up. Like, now you, you won me back. I've hated this bloodline thing for months. It kind of got me back. Don't mess this up. Man, I hope they don't mess it up either. Uh, well, I'm going to save it for when we dissect our predictions. But this was great. And then as Paul continues to try to, um, you know, explain everything, uh, Jay interrupts, so we can go from there. Jay comes in, uh, decides to have some kind of conversation uh, about it. Uh, Solo interrupts that conversation angrily. Uh, there's a weird... I don't think Solo likes talking into the microphone. Is that just a Solo thing? He just doesn't want to talk into the mic? I think it's a creative decision because he ran okay. his mouth a lot in NXT and I liked it because he's like, I'm going to beat you up and then he yeah. proceeds to beat people up. Like, sure. Like, he talked, he sort of, he talked more he orders, in NXT. Yeah, he orders Paul Heyman around, which I'm happy about. And there's a subtext there that we can mention when we do our picks. I'm on the fence about some of this stuff. What was Solo staring at that he didn't see Jay's kick to his face? I think he was just talking to Paul Heyman and wasn't paying what attention. You, I know. Was, it, the blocking was, was weird. So that you're, so if you didn't see it, or hopefully you've seen it by now, uh, Solo's telling Paul to get out of the ring, get out of the ring. It's like Solo wants to start the match now. Like, we're going to do this, we're going to do this now. And he's just telling Paul to get out of the ring, but he's doing that uh, parent third person stare where he's sort of I'm talking to you but I'm looking over here because I'm focused on something else or I'm so mad at you I can't even look at you thing and in doing so lets himself get kicked right in the face by Jay who took the opportunity right away right and Paul Heyman standing there like oh uh, please don't kick me too it just kind of felt weird <laughs> right uh, it was a miscue on purpose almost I guess I'm not exactly sure what we were looking at I think this is a little clunky and to be honest like it it served its purpose i mean kind of like i feel like we didn't really i mean we could have just had the video for tribal combat and that be the end of it because i mean jay and solo were gonna fight each other later tonight so i get that you want to get one more promo in but i feel like the promo as fun as it was i feel like we could have done without it and you could have did all the storytelling just with We'll talk about the main event in a little bit because I feel like they could have gone further with it. If you want to make me believe that Jay is actually going to win, which, spoiler alert, I don't think he is, but we'll talk about that in our not picks. Not now, not if you wanted to go home, show. Right. Uh, so, but I have a thought about that as well. Maybe they could have, you know, cut this down in half and put a women's match in. I mean, to be fair, we did get... We, we're going to get into the Grayson Waller effect soon because I, I actually I loved it. I loved it as well. I thought it was fantastic, but we could have done something. More. I mean, we could have done Maybe. we could have done another women's match, but besides the one we, we got, given, we could have given EO and Selena more more time, time right? I mean, I, mean no, I don't know. This was okay. Let's get in, let's just jump into the second hour because the pacing was really weird. So yeah. we start off Austin Theory's backstage. Uh, giving an interview and he's talking about his match against Santos next week but hmm, you know he's got to take care of Cameron Grimes and so then he goes out and the, we get this match which by the way we forgot to mention I forgot to mention during the LA Knight Sheamus match uh, Santos was out there uh, you know as part of the people involved in the Royal but in the Battle Royal today and then Austin comes out and just decks <laughs> Santos for no reason and then it kind of sets up what happens at the beginning of this match so the bell rings and Santos is trying to get down to the ring but poorly acting security is trying to hold him back but you know what and Austin is not paying attention so when Santos finally leaves he turns around and Cameron Grimes hits a really gnarly curb stomp to the chest which yeah. I, that's one of my favorite Cameron Grimes moves and then it was just a two minute like Cameron Grimes had offense for about a minute and then Austin Theory came back with it and then Austin picks up the win 
This match didn't go more than like two minutes or so. It was quick. Yeah. It was quick. Austin Austin Theory did a great job of making Cameron Grimes look incredible. And I'm not taking anything away from Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes is quite impressive and does some amazing things. But I'm still confused on what the hell are you, Cameron Grimes? What are what are you? Are you the happy face heel? Are you the heel faced happy face? What are you? You know, we could have gotten more dissection of it had they not pulled Baron Corbin suddenly out of the feud that we were getting with those two like two months ago. I guess. <laughs> but even then, Baron Corbin, fantastic wrestler, still cardboard on the microphone. Yeah. Um, I... I like. I want to like Cameron Grimes. I really want to like Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes has the hair I always wanted. I've always wanted early '90s metal hair down to my waist. That's my dream. I didn't achieve my dream. Uh, but I think that Cameron Grimes is strong. Does these great moves. Is a pretty good tactician in there. I don't think they know what to do with Cameron Grimes right now. Or it, like I will take inspiration from Pars Fun Known's video of ten people that Vince McMahon won't push because they're Triple H guys. Cameron Grimes is a Triple H guy, like cultivated all that in NXT, but Vince won't push him for some reason. And I'm like, then why are we calling people to the main roster if you're not gonna use them? Yeah, I think we're getting into family politics and bullshit. And until Vince is out of the picture, out of the picture. Like, totally disassociated from WWE, which, if you're keeping up with that news, a federal grand jury just took Vince McMahon away and tried to give him spinal surgery in a jail cell. That's not entirely accurate, but it's similar to the storylines you're going to hear. I don't know. There's some, there's meddling and meddling and meddling. And there's Vince diehards that are letting it happen. If it was just Triple H versus Vince, Triple H would have probably coerced and compromised enough to get this stuff done. It's not. There's folks in there that Vince has put in play that are just die hard to Vince or think the way he does. Which is why the conspiracy theory, not to go down this rabbit hole, and I'm not going to vent and rant on this, but I do think the Shawn Michaels might plan a coup and might do his own thing down in the SEC, and it's going to be great and change wrestling forever, but it's a few years away. Oh, we're very passionate about all this. Uh, but I think that could happen. Yeah. Anyway, Austin picks up the win. Great. We get this promo from Asuka. <laughs> Here's the thing. If Santos does not win next week, I'm just go we'll be back here for the review and I'm just going to scream into the ether. Why? What is the point in the words of uh Miss Sriracha Muchacha herself over at Ring the Bell, Paloma Star. She's like, "What's the point?" And I'm like, "Girl, I feel you." <laughs> So we'll absolutely. see. No, I, I absolutely agree. I think at some point it's like, why? What are we doing? Why, you, why are you putting me through so much of this? Why don't you like brown people? What's going on? You get to putting things through a lot. Oscar's murdering a punching bag in her promo. <laughs> so yeah, so we get to this Oscar promo, which definitely looks like it was shot. I don't know, in a random locker room where they hung a bag. Uh, they put the plastic over the camera to make sure that she didn't spray onto the camera. Uh, I don't just I don't know if they made a choice to make a discrepancy in the budget. Charlotte Flair obviously got a chunk of the budget to have a drone and be on a boat. Asuka got nothing. Um, it's OK. It didn't fuel me in wanting more of this three way. Right. Let me, let me rephrase that. No, we know in what you meant. To <laughs> <laughs> we know what you meant. One time I had this dream at Bank. I woke up. <laughs> And one time at band camp, Oscar <laughs> came in. She was playing a flute, but I couldn't see it. Uh, I think that they, they don't know how to promote women's wrestlers, and they're not talking to the women to do it. And I think the only one who has any smidgen of creative control might be Shotzi Bailey, because it's working. They're meddling, but it's working, and there's one... Horrible thing I'll talk about when we get there. We'll get there. Well, um, well, well, actually, we'll get there in a little bit because literally, so. Oh, we're coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go so, ahead. yeah, so I love seeing, last thing, I love seeing Asuka just cut the promo completely in Japanese with subtitles. I'm like, this is what I yes. wanted. I was like, I was if your wrestlers are not fluent in English while they're learning, let them cut it and get subtitles. We just, we just talked about that last week. I was very excited to see that. Throw the subtitles out there. We're all it's, anime kids now. We can follow subtitles. Let's go. Seriously, it's not that hard. All right, let's talk about finally the thing that I we've been asking for for weeks. 
with the storyline and we kind of, and we finally got it but we have the Grayson Waller effect and to his guest for this episode is damage control control whatever you control. want to call her control alt delete uh Bailey and EO come down to the ring so Grayson Waller is such a little shit I love him because he starts this interview and Bailey is hyping her and EO up and everything and then all of a sudden the audio of just shots of yelling Bailey with the sound of scissors snipping and like Bailey goes out to like run out of the ring and Grayson Waller begins to laugh because he had that planned I'm like Grayson you're such a little shit I love it <laughs> I it took me out for a moment and I had to think about it because I was like really you got a clip of Shotzi and that's what you were gonna come on although you're right he is such a jerk that I do buy it to a point but then the reveal which is about to happen as a horror movie person, I was a little like, that's nah, sticky. But I, it, yeah, I, I was fine. We're not working with horror movie camera people. They should hire. But anyways, so as they continue, then Shotzi's music kicks and we see coming down from the stage, somebody in the tank. I immediately knew that wasn't Shotzi. I'm like, that's too small to be Shotzi. No shade to Selena. But <laughs> like, again, Mrs. Malachi Black, I know how tall you are. You are a tiny thing, but I, I'm i not going to lie. I would love to see Zelina and Shotzi team up more, but, you know, that's just me. But EO goes out of the ring to go confront. You know, Bailey's being a little henchwoman. She sends EO to go deal with who presumably Shotzi is. But then EO makes the realization and be like, wait a minute, that's not Shotzi in the tank. And then we get to the camera back into the ring. Grayson's laughing it up, and he's like being... That one dude at the movie theater that's yelling during the horror movie, be like, look behind you. <laughs> hey, she's over there. She's over there. And so we slowly get the pan of Shotzi, who is kicking ass in her new look. And just mm -hmm. the getup she was wearing, I'm just like, yeah. this is what I wanted yeah. to see. And so. Uh, how how long has it been since we saw her get her head shaved? Has I want to say month? like. A month, yeah. So that that happened about three weeks, maybe a month ago. Yeah, okay. And I was then we're slowly... not quite a month, not quite a month, but so maybe close, three right? weeks, probably. Her hair grows hella fast, right? I was just like, damn. Her hair's or like she already almost has bangs. It's been three weeks. Shotzi out here looking like GI Jane, and I appreciate it. But oh, Bailey, I love great. Bailey's slow turnaround. She's like, she's not there. She's not there. She's not there. Turns around. Shotzi's just like, hey. Bailey's like, I didn't mean it, and then slowly backs into the ropes, and then she attempts to punch Shotzi, and Shotzi, I wish that, like, Shotzi beat her down, but she only really threw one punch, and then went into full, like, eat, 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 mode. Yeah. <laughs> she pulls out the loudest razor, <laughs> like, the loudest okay. head, sh like, pair of razor I have ever heard in my life. In my head, I thought this. I was like, those are really loud. Like, she's not mic'd. That can't be. What are those? And I'm, and it took, it didn't take me out of it completely, but I had a moment of like, is she near a microphone? Is she carrying a microphone? Like, Wait, I, I kind of, it, it took me a bit, but I was like, damn. I was like, whoever the mic people are, good job. Because normally you can't hear those unless you're like, yeah, it's crazy. Them. Yeah. So it has come out since then that WWE pumped the sound of that in. Which I don't hate. I think they could have maybe been a little more subtle. But because on TV, it was like, whoa, she's going to cut her head off with a weed whacker. That's ridiculous. Uh, I think this is so much fun. I think Bailey is just now starting to sell it to where I believe it. I think she needs to play a bit more of the horror archetype of uh, be afraid. Don't do not do the action of being afraid. Now to go full acting teacher. Don't be like, I'm afraid I'm going to run. No, we need to see you be afraid. You need to sit in it. And it's going to feel weird and awkward as the murderer comes towards you. And you have to breathe and be in that moment and then fight them off. Yeah. Shotzi's all in. Shotzi's killing it. This is, Sh I don't want to pigeonhole her to just this archetype, but Shotzi has experience in this. As we have said multiple times on across all the different shows and podcast reviews. Listen, if it's not apparently obvious, we stand Shotzi on this channel. Like, we'd love her to death. She'll never remember me, but, you know, I had a movie with her. It was great. Uh, and I can't, I'll tell you, I can tell you the stories off the camera because they're uh, amazing. Um, no, I, I wish that she 
this is the push we've been hoping for, and I hope it lasts. Because it's been sort of two or three years of what do we do with Shotzi? Uh, and she's come a long way, and she's still a fantastic performer. I wonder where this goes. Are we going to run this all the way out to WrestleMania? And this Bailey Shotzi whatever thing? I don't think so. I have it in my SummerSlam picks, and I'll tell you about it when we get there. Yeah, I will. I have an idea too, and I think we're gonna relatively get it sooner than this. Uh-huh. But we'll, we'll get so. into that. So I will say the last bit of this as Shotzi is running Bailey out of the ring. It is revealed that Selena Vega is in the tank. Which, by the way, she kind of she looks great in the she, nettings tank, and that, the tank, yeah, tank and the hat and sweet. the jacket. I was just like, <laughs> and it was at this moment I was like, I stand you, Selena, even more now. But more importantly. I would be okay with the Shotzi Zelina tag team for a little bit. <laughs> or just them being friends. Like, the they cosplayer and the horror movie person, it just makes sense in my fantasy. <laughs> and Shotzi's tagged with a handful of folks, I think, because she's friends with everybody, I get the impression. Uh, but they don't know kind of how to mix match this correctly. She's tagged with some random ass people for the last year and a half, two years. Um, I don't know. Maybe she's got to be in a faction with some of these women. Maybe they got to clean this up some. But, you know, it's the women's division, so they're not going to do anything because they don't care. You just had the your... Women... We just had our tag champs be pinned last week on SmackDown. Like, what? what yeah, what like, is what is going on? There's so there's oh. also so many women that have not been on my television screen in forever, and I'm like, uh-huh. what are we doing? But that's for a whole different podcast. So this yep. kind of sets up our, on, our only women's match of the evening, and it was like two and a half minutes. EO versus Zelina. And of course, you know, I thought we were going to get more, but I should have known better because before the match even started, we got a recap that, oh, the last time they faced each other was two months ago. What the hell? <laughs> right. Let's let's recap this and take up time that they could use wrestling. Uh, the fact that they're only giving women two minute spots still. And then every now and then being like, well, giving them the token five minute or 10 minute over the last few months is disturbing and not okay. Well, what? yeah. Well, I will have a uh, hunter. I'm going to debut the Triple H accountability corner in a little bit here cuz cuz so this match was quick. Um uh, Zelina and see, I one more time cuz I know Zelina can go. EO is always fabulous. I love her. I thought but, they were great. Yeah, I thought for a 2-minute match they did what they needed to. I love seeing it. EO's ready to go for the kill, but then she gets distracted cuz Bailey and Shotzi horribly are fighting on the ramp because I feel like Shotzi tripped or somebody tripped somebody and like the roll over like Bailey trying mm-hmm. to knock her off didn't really go well. And then I yeah. feel like Shotzi hung around the stage too long after Bailey booked it to the back. And then I was just like, I get it. You want to sell the crazy bits, but I feel like you could have like did it like maybe a couple seconds less and then started chasing her. But sure. I feel and it was long enough for EO to be like, what is happening for Zelina to grab her and pin her for one, two, three. And once again, distraction is what makes EO from Bailey makes EO Sky lose. I'm not mad that Zelina wins because Zelina is a favorite of mine. I just want an actual match that doesn't require distractions. And I, on the one hand, I'm happy that we're pushing Bailey and Shotzi more, but I don't like it that it's at the expense of EO absolutely. and Zelina. I have nothing to add. You said everything I was going to say. I think you're absolutely right. I, I think this builds up to my SummerSlam theory, but I'm probably going to get it wrong because they always do the opposite of what we think is right. But I agree with you. Absolutely agree. So then we get this quickly. We'll talk about this. We get the Bianca Belair promo, which looks like she got the least of this budget, which is not great because you get the person. Yeah. I was well, like, I, like, I was like, you give the two for- women of color. Cause I will throw Oscar in there. Cause she is like not yeah, American. Absolutely. Like the least yep. amount of budget, but you give the black girl the least amount of budget from what it seems does not s- s- help the image. No, but I, I feel like they said, hey, send us some stuff over the next few days. And we'll cut it up in like and we'll Premiere Pro here's, as best as we can. Here's, here's your script. Go get them. And, and, or maybe they sent someone there and they said, hey, we got 45 minutes. Do you got a gym? Oh, that's cool. Hey, do you got this? That's cool. Uh, all of the, all of the, now that we're kind of ragging on these promos, all of these promos were bare bones, but it was sort of obvious Charlotte Flair got the money because now she's the heel and fine, whatever. But again, it's just doing a disservice to all of the women's division when you're not pumping them up and giving them this opportunity to make cool promos. 
you know, uh, going into SummerSlam. And I, I don't think it's entirely Triple H's fault, even though the accountability corner still matters. And it's coming very think, shortly. <laughs> it's coming shortly. And there's just sort of meddling and what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Uh, but again, this is another SmackDown where we could have carved five, ten more minutes for the women and had something to do and interesting stuff to see. They're earning it. Absolutely, they're earning it. And if you're one of those, I, I can say this, we're more than 15 minutes. We, if you're one of those fuckboys who's out there ragging on women's wrestling just because it, this, for some reason, this emasculates you or makes you not confident in yourself watching, I go, go do something else. Go read <laughs> go a book, some, have several go, seats. Like, go, go learn to read and then go read a book. Like, what's going on? All right. So I think this is a perfect segment into the Triple H accountability corner. So as uh, with JBL, he gets to take the reign for the AEW corner. I'm going to yell at Triple Hunter, um, Triple Hunter H. Hunter Helmsworth Hemsley. Hunter Herms Helmsley. Sir, I love you, but we got to talk. So I hope you have a nice beverage. I hope you're sitting down. So let's go into this. I first want to start off with the positive. You know, I know that you're trying your best because you have one hand tied behind your back because there is meddling across, not just from Vince, but from whoever else seems to be in charge of creative. And, you know, you have to deal with a lot between trying to get creative on track, booking these shows, making sure talent is happy and everything. But we, we got we got to have this chat, man. I, I love you, but what the f fuck are we doing with the women's division in WWE? So... I expressed my feelings kind of at a medium volume on Monday Night Raw, but this is where I'm going to get passionate. I appreciate that Bailey and Shotzi is finally picking up some steam, but at the cost of what? Zelina and Io having a two-minute match? You have the three women in one of the one of two women's matches for SummerSlam, not even physically at the show, and you're not going to invest in trying to get these promos off the ground. I was like, I understand that all the budget went to Cody and Roman, but what does that say to your women's talent? It was like, yes. And all the all the cars and their promos and all the slow oh, driving in the studio promos. S so SmackDown's doing a little better, but Hunter, I'm about to rip your ass for the Raw women's division. What the fuck are we doing on the Raw women's division? You have so many women on that roster, but they're not being on my television screen. And then you have the audacity, because I don't give a fuck what the reasoning is. How are you pulling Becky and Trish to not be at SummerSlam? I understand you want to get a big pop because Trish is Canadian, and we're going to have this match in Can Canada in two weeks. But man, you f how do you not have Becky Lynch, who is your most over women's wrestler of the modern era, maybe on outside of Bianca Belair and Charlotte, like... This is the bread and butter because everyone loves Becky Lynch. And of course, Trish Stratus is a legend in her own right. But how the hell do you have them do all of this work? Because Becky was not, both her and Trish were not having it. And they let their feelings be known on the internet, especially Becky. I'm like, how the hell do you have her do a photo shoot for SummerSlam and be told earlier in the week, oh, we're pulling your match from SummerSlam. I'm like, Hunter, we need to fix this. We, this triple threat build has not been the funnest and you know i don't know if it was your decision or if it came from ronda and shana themselves but you made me believe in the ronda and shana match like those video packages on raw were fucking phenomenal but how can you not do that for your other women's matches what the fuck is happening i get frustrated because you have such a diverse talent of women on your roster across Raw and SmackDown. And you mean to tell me that all your time and effort is going into the men's matches? And Hunter, I know you believe in the women's division just like your wife did. And to be honest, Hunter, you're kind of disappointing me right now, dude. Like, I thought I would never say that, but I still have faith in you because of what I saw from NXT Black and Gold with you and Shawn Michaels. But I'm hoping between now that SummerSlam is about to come to an end today, you have between the end of SummerSlam and Survivor Series to earn my faith back in you. Because if you continue at this rate, Hunter, 
I can't, I can't do it anymore, dude. You have three pay-per-views after this to build these women's storylines up. And if I don't start seeing some progression, Hunter, my faith in you and the good faith that we have built through the last couple of years through showing me that you can book this division very, very well, we're going to have some problems. Because if your homie, Shawn Michaels, can do it with the developmental kids, as everyone likes to call them, or the future stars of WWE, you can do it with the established main rosters that you had, especially your horsewomen who you help cultivate and create. So, Hunter, you need to get on this, and the rest of the creative, I need you to believe in this women, because if you don't, then what the hell are we for? Might as well just let the women go wherever we want. Shit, Impact will be happy to take all your talent because as they've proven, they've taken the people that you have deemed unnecessary and turned them into fucking stars. Shout out to Trinity and Deanna who were WWE wrestlers and are killing it in Impact and are about to fucking main event emergence at the end of this month. And that has been my Triple H accountability corner with the women's division. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Beautiful TED Talk in the middle of this podcast for... Uh, all the heat and flame coming from Mikey on the Triple H. I, I absolutely agree. I think there's plenty of room on the Biconics podcast world for multiple accountability corners. Uh, if you listen to the AEW Dynamite podcast, you know all about the Tony Khan accountability corner hosted by JVL. This one hosted by Mikey over here on the WWE side. I'm here for it. I think it's great. Someday I'll find someone to hold accountable. Uh, it's probably not going to be nearly as interesting. Uh, I, yeah, I, and I think Becky, the man who came out with Ariel Helwani and talked all about how Ronda's getting pushed and we're not for, and this is ridiculous. And you know, people who cry about Ronda getting all Ronda crying about how she's not getting a fair deal and how hard it is. And then she gets everything. She's gotten everything she's ever wanted. She hasn't worked for any of this. You know, it, it's just, there's a lot of systemic things wrong in general dude and like becky and bianca had a fight for their match at SummerSlam last year it came out that they weren't even going to be on the card i'm like <gasps> and that turned out to be one of the banging matches that opened up SummerSlam last year and it was one of my women's matches of the year it was ridiculous and they, they did it to seth last year they pulled his match from the card last year too so it's we'll weird we'll, we'll we'll continue on these accountability corners because they are desperately needed for sure room for, room for all of them uh, I SummerSlam, so, yeah, SummerSlam okay, bumpers, okay. main event. We kind of already talked about it a little bit. So we get to the main event. We get to Jay versus Solo, uh, which was interesting for a few reasons because it's sort of where do we go? I'm still not entirely sure why we have Jay Solo here happening, but fine. Um, this was basically a squash for the first half because it was just can't get anything started and Solo smashing his older brother. Uh, I think they, they're playing up the brother underneath the, yeah, brother, but I like that brother. Come on, come on, big brother thing, which is okay. I don't hate it. And then Jay goes uh, Superman for the second half of this match. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, all right, my turn. And then the last three minutes is just Jay rolling solo, um, which is kind of a weird term to say, destroying solo. Uh, Solo eventually get uh, the match is over. Solo comes out of the ring to grab a chair. Jay follows him out of the ring. Jay immediately takes said chair and just pummels the Solo with the chair. Um, I thought this was uh, okay. It was a good match. It was an okay ending. Right. The just the final felt- bits before the show went off the air. Here's the thing. Like, and we'll talk about this shortly because we're going to go into SummerSlam predictions between hey. you know me and the professor here. I feel like if you wanted to sell, oh, maybe Solo won't show up. You should have had Jay go hard, like go boss mode and literally destroy his little brother, which I know kind of goes against his character because he's trying to get Solo out of it. But listen, I am going to quote Yellowstone as some like as an example here. Sometimes you just need to let siblings fight it out because sometimes like fighting it out is the only language that can translate across all of the spectrums here. And I feel like Jay being like, listen, man, like, I ha- I hate to do this to you, but, like, I got this match against our cousin, and I don't need your wishy-washy butt to kind of mess things up, so I'm going to take away sure. Roman's ammunition. But see, here's what I was hoping. 
and it would have been again it goes against jay what he's been built up to but i was like our cousin took jimmy away from me so i have to do the same and i know you'll forgive me and then just wail on him even more like take him know. out of the equation I had a thought in the middle of this match, it looked like Jay got hurt and was playing an injury at one point. And I thought that, oh my God, are we going to go into SummerSlam with an injury plot line? Gosh, I hope made, not. I don't I think so. So mad. You didn't play it up. There was a good 45 seconds there where I was dreading, oh no, it's not. He's going to show up at SummerSlam with a cast from the Solo Sokoa match. It looks like that was not the case. I did have that Vince McMahon moment of, oh, no, you're going to do. Of course, I want. Yeah, I want wrestlers to be safe. But then that kind of got thrown out the window. Cody, we're looking at you, bro, at Hell in the Cell. I was like, you knew that was a horrible idea and you still went through it. So you can't. But you can't. That is not the that is not the bar we want to set for injured wrestlers wrestling. Seth took care of him. He had enough mobility. That's I. That's fair, but I, I'm not defending it. That's still a blood clot that gets in your heart. You die. But the, the amount of respect and legend and folklore that that match has created mm, might have been worth it. Right. So I think this was a fine ending to kind of end off SmackDown. I just wish there was more. Fine. Right. It was fine. We got we were right up against it at the end of the two hours thing, and we don't get bonus time much anymore. So okay. Um, but out of ten minis, I, I mean, give, this was a. This I give it a solid like seven and a half. <laughs> yeah, this was a seven nine seven eight for me. It was right up against a eight out of ten. Uh, I think a little bit more women's match stuff would have been great. I think a little bit more from that tag match in the middle might have bumped it up to an eight or so. Um, but the, that's the good news, bad news with SmackDown is that we're, we're getting all these twos and threes and fours and all of a sudden we got an eight and we're excited. Okay. You got me interested. I'll watch again. Right. Um, I'll be honest. I'm thorough. SmackDown as crap as like up and down as it is, at least it's consistent for most of its time. <laughs> it's, co it's consistently twos and threes. <laughs> it's well, it's kids. It, it, it's consistently certain things, but obviously I'm having sure. a better time with SmackDown than me and many are with raw at the moment but you know uh, outside of stuff i don't, outside, I don't yeah. even want to check in with raw i'm still confused by finn baylor's for fighting seth but hey i'm i like finn, there was so. there was a there was a gleam during this past monday night raw but i don't know if they're going to capitalize it gunther and chad gable had a banger of a match it was amazing Ooh, that's interesting maybe i gotta go watch raw it was a little clunky so but like in terms of storytelling but it was beautiful uh oh. go do the tag Mac. Mac okay Mac, you do the tag well, that is going to. Oop, hold up. That was not meant to happen. Yes, it was. I lied. You know what? We're professionally unprofessional here. But that is going to be it for this week's SmackDown review. The SmackDown squad was reunited in the last 10 minutes. But if you enjoy this long form review, make sure to check out our other long form reviews because we had a lot of hot takes this week. Over on Raw, me and Minnie here contemplated over what's going down with the women's roster on Raw. Um, you know, Becky versus Trish not being at SummerSlam baffles my mind, but you know what? I vented that out in the Triple H accountability corner here on SmackDown. We also had another TK accountability corner over at the Dynamite review where JBL went off during the 200th episode of AEW, which was great. But we pretty much cover all of the other major television wrestling shows out there from all the WWE shows, AEW, Impact, Ring of Honor. It is a good time. Make sure to follow us on the social medias to stay up to date when videos go live, as well as to see some clips from our reviews and shenanigans and some behind the scenes stuff. But you can also check us out where you can find all your podcasts if you were looking for something different, like who our favorite wrestlers are, what the origin of Ski Team came from, and why we talk about mahogany a lot on this podcast as well. <laughs> so it is a great time. But that is going to be it from the SmackDown squad and the rest of us here at the Biconics to all of you watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, take care of yourself, love one another. And as always, adios, sayonara, and thank you for watching.